All right, we're back in the 2005 TJ with another little project. I'm going to begin the process of upgrading the sound system. And as of now, it just has the factory CD player, but it does have the optional uh, console subwoofer, which, of course, is blown, just like most TJs. And it just sounds really bad, and you have to have the bass turned all the way down so you don't hear it. So, I'm going to be showing you in this video how to remove and replace that subwoofer. There are a few different options. You can go with an aftermarket subwoofer which will require some modifications and possibly making a custom bracket to make it fit. Or you can do what I did. Uh, ordered from Quadratech and you can also get this on eBay or whatever else. The, the actual factory replacement style subwoofer. It is not a Mopar product. It is an aftermarket one. And it's actually been made better and some of the weaknesses with the factory sub were corrected when they created this. So we'll go ahead and set that aside for now. And we'll start the disassembly project for the center console. You'll need supposedly just a 10 millimeter socket and a T25 Torx. And start by removing the cup holder in the middle right here. So, as far as the cup holder goes, it's just rubber, and it pulls straight up and out. Which, you'll see there's the 10 millimeter socket right there. So we'll go ahead and zip that out real quick. And then, in the rear cup holder, underneath of it, is your T25 Torx bit. So once you get the little rubber piece pulled out from the rear cup holder, here's what you'll see. There's your two T25 Torx screws that need to come out. All right, so once you get all your bolts out, the whole console is free to move. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna reach under, which would be hard for me to film, unplug the wiring harness, and then just pull the console out. So here is a shot of the harness. I've just got the console pulled up. Got a little bit of cleaning to do under here, but here's a shot of the harness that you need to disconnect and pull apart before you can take it out. All right, once you get your harness undone, there is a little zip tie right here that needs to be broken or cut to release this harness. That way the harness can stay. And now, you can just pull your harness out and we can take it in the house and work on it where it's a little bit warmer. All right, so the first step to disassembling this is down inside of here, there are two screws, Phillips head, that you need to take out. screws out. Look on the bottom here, there's these little clips that attach on both sides. Unfortunately, those have to be removed. There's no way to really uh, get them off without destroying them, but that's okay because uh, they will not need to be reused. Let's see, it's kind of unnecessary with all the screws that are holding it in. Here, I'll zip out these three screws. And there is what the subwoofer looks like. In fact, one. Let's remove this little cover, and then you can see the problem here. This is what happens: the foam completely separates. And then there's actually nothing holding the, the woofer into the housing. So that's probably what yours looks like. So, versus the new one. As you can 
see, they've actually corrected this by not using the same type of foam. It's more of a plastic to eliminate the problem, from, keep it from happening again so soon. All right, you'll need a T20 Torx for these. I'm just gonna go ahead and pop them all out. All right, now I've got the four bolts out. This is just from age. It's kind of stuck a little bit, so I'm gonna pry it out of there. Right. Once we get it out, let's we'll see. It's a dual voice coil subwoofer, so there's two connections, and there's a a fatter one, so you don't have to worry about which one's which. And it doesn't honestly even matter which side is which. All right, so got our old one out. Go ahead and do a little comparison to the new one here. Similar. This one's just got a little bit of a, like a rubber protector on the magnet. All right, so everything else is just a reverse removal. Get your connections plugged in. Do it the right way. I don't like how I just tried to do it. It's kind of loose on there. Let's tighten these up a little bit. So I definitely, I do not like how that fits compared to the old one. Let's see. You can see that the terminals on the old one are actually larger than the factory terminals on here. So I'm going to try to tighten these up a little bit. Just bend these down. I guess that'll be one strike against this. We'll have to see how it sounds. Should definitely be the same size terminals. Maybe it's just something with, since I have a 2005, maybe the earlier ones had a different size terminal, or maybe it's just a manufacturing flaw. rattle off. Oops. Just be careful putting those on there. I don't want to damage anything. Okay. So this just drops right back down into place and they included these little washers that go on top of that I don't know if it's exactly necessary but we'll try it out so you get your washer on there and then hand tighten these down I would not use a anything powered related because this is just going in these are just going into the plastic and you don't want to over tighten them but once you get all these put in we'll go ahead and start reassembling all right so you can put this back on I'm actually going to leave it off because unless you kind of glue it on there it's just something that's going to rattle around. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that off. Plus it fit better on the old one when I install it back in here. All right, so once you get this tightened down, like I said, don't over tighten everything. We can, by the way, there's the amplifier on the back right here. I'm going to slide this in here. Get lined up the pins. Look how it came off. And 
then you'll want to put your three screws in here and then your ones in the top and that will hold it securely in there. So I'll put our two screws on the top. I just started the ones on the side. Then I'm going to tighten the top ones up to draw it up into place where it needs to be. Okay, so there we are, it's back in. Now we're ready to go put it back in the vehicle. Okay, back outside here. Putting it back in is just the reverse removal. We'll go ahead and set it into place, tilt it up, we'll connect our harness back up to right here. And I think the harness looks a little bit different on the earlier, like 97 era Jeeps. And that might be a good time for you to bolt everything back down to test it. Just plug it in and fire the stereo up, make sure it works, and then we'll bolt everything down. Bolts put in. Get the cup holders popped back into place. Now we're ready to try it out. All right, well, we got it back on. And if you take my word for it, that it definitely works now. I've got the bass turned back up, and we've got our factory sound back. So, This is just the first step in the uh, upgrade series that I'm going to be doing on the audio system. I will be installing a double DIN navigation system in here and using the Metra kit so it looks completely factory. And that'll be next. But for now, at least we've got our base back. <laughs> 